Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Ange Kirkoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about my hidden gems for week 7 of the 2021 fantasy football season. After the snap that occurred on Thursday Night Football, many of us began to realize that players like Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt were missing from our lineups. But little did we know it was going to affect a lot more than just those few players. Again, the Denver Broncos defense completely vanished as Dernish Johnson ran over that defense for the entirety of those four quarters. Not only did the snap occur and force many of our players to go on bye week, six teams with vital players that are of course winning our weekly contest between weeks one through six and it's going to be tough in order to win without them and not only that many of us are dealing with a plethora of injuries that force our rosters and our benches to be stacked and in situations where we cannot pivot to other options but in order to go ahead and bring our lineups back to success and help us win our week seven contests we're going to be using the help of underdog fantasy is they'll help us collect the six hidden gems for week seven of the 2021 fantasy football season we're going to be talking about six sleepers across different timelines across the multiverse on different planets on different teams that will help us in week seven in order to give us an advantage against our rivals now of course the six players that i mentioned today are often players that aren't started in a wide majority of leagues in fact the majority of these players are being started this week in less than 25 percent of leagues and often these players are even rostered in less than 10 percent of leagues we'll talk about a variety of players at different positions running back wide receiver in order to give you guys some perspective and statistics that justify the reasoning as to why i want to go ahead and potentially play these players because not only are we all dealing with very thin lineups but perhaps we're going to have to hit the waiver wire in order to help ourselves win our week seven contest with these various hidden gems that we'll talk about today before we begin today's video i want to thank you guys for the support again continuing to come out here we are on our way to 55,000 subscribers so please subscribe to the channel we're making fantasy football content for the entirety of the 2021 season whether it is weekly rankings sunday morning live streams do not forget tomorrow morning 8 a.m to 10 a.m pacific standard time i'll be here answering questions with updated rankings on the week hidden gems you know trade targets waiver wire videos all of the above so again if you have not yet already and you're new subscribe to the channel thank you very much again also check out underdog fantasy not only are they going to help us collect the six hidden gems but they could potentially help you win some money this weekend with your first deposit of ten dollars or more using promo code andrew you can get an additional ten dollars in bonus cash you go down to the description of the video and click that link use promo code andrew and of course begin winning and of course capturing your own hidden gems on a weekly basis thank you very much after we click the six hidden gems for week seven of the 2021 fantasy football season i'm going to be venturing to underdogfantasy.com in order to look for more hidden gems again their pick them slips there are a lot of plays there whether it's over or under based on the specific statistic for each individual player in which you can go ahead and make some money so i'm going to go ahead give you guys my perspective and the statistics as to why i'm going after some of those pick -ems. again we'll talk about that at the end of the video there are timestamps down below in the description for those of you who are trying to immediately get there check those out and hear my perspective and opinions uh you know in the past i've broken even but this time we're going for it all we're gonna end up having a good weekend here so for those of you interested check that out Either way, let's go ahead, let's talk about this. Let's talk about our six hidden gems. In order to collect the Power Stone, we are not going to decimate Xandar. In fact, we are going to travel to Baltimore in order to collect Devontae Freeman because this upcoming week, the Baltimore Ravens take on the Cincinnati Bengals. And though the Baltimore Ravens are shorthanded this week without the services of a Latavius Murray, I think Devontae Freeman immediately fits into this roster and of course is going to find immediate success because we've seen him do it over the last couple weeks as of this current moment in time Devontae freeman's only being started in 20 percent of leagues so one out of every five leagues he is being started as a whole i mean i'm thinking to myself sure there are a lot of leagues out there that don't need the services of Devontae freeman but if you do play in a 12 team league maybe even a 10 team league or higher you you're probably going to see him either rostered or potentially started this upcoming weekend because a lot of people need running backs and with so many out on bye week and injury we of course need the services of a player as such last week Devontae freeman against the los angeles chargers the second easiest matchup at the running back position was able to garner nine rushing attempts for 53 yards that's 5.9 yards per carry again we've talked about it over the last couple seasons regardless of which running back is in this backfield they are always going to you know exceed five yards per carry whether it was mark ingram jk dobbins gus edwards lamar jackson i mean he's not running back but still Devontae freeman latavius murray at times he's been pretty inefficient this season but ultimately the running backs here are always going to succeed because it's a schematic you know success for their offensive line and of course having a mobile quarterback always keeps that backside defensive end honest and not rushing down the line of scrimmage in order to make a play on a dive regardless 
Nonetheless, he was able to score a touchdown last week for 11.3 total fantasy points. Going into this upcoming week's matchup, though the Cincinnati Bengals have been good defensively in terms of stopping opposing running backs, as of late, they have certainly given up a lot of points. Let's look at the last couple weeks. Aaron Jones, 14 carries for 103 yards, four catches in that game. A.J. Dillon in the same contest, eight rushing attempts for 30 yards, got himself four catches for 49 yards, and a receiving touchdown. A great performance out of that backfield against Cincinnati on that weekend. And it doesn't just stop there. We had James Robinson, 18 carries, 78 yards, two touchdowns against that defense. We saw Najee Harris, 14 carries for 40 yards, and had the you know record-breaking game of 19 targets, 14 receptions, and 102 yards. And then we saw DeAndre Swift last week, 13 carries, 24 yards, and a touchdown, seven targets, five receptions, 43 yards. What all of these running backs relatively have in common is the fact that they got a lot of utilization in the passing game. Though Devontae Freeman may not get that many targets this week, if not any, because the entire scheme of this offense is predicated on running the ball and not really targeting their respective running backs, there's always a potential that he ends up doing so and gets a couple catches here and there. And if that's going to be the case, this is a free, uh, you know, Devontae Freeman has been a running back in his career that has been versatile, dynamic, and can absolutely be used as a three down back, which is hopefully going to be the case. Whether it's him or Le'Veon Bell, I think Devontae Freeman has shown far more efficiency and or effectiveness in this offense. And that's why I think he's going to get the nod this weekend and, of course, deliver some great performances. When we talk about the Baltimore Ravens offense, if, in fact, Devontae Freeman isn't going to get many receptions and not be able to utilize the upside of a PPR, you know, half PPR scoring format, it's going to be a matter of whether or not this man can score touchdowns. And I think as the power stone, he is in line for a touchdown because when I look at the Baltimore Ravens running backs this season, Week one, two rushing touchdowns from running backs. Week two, we had one rushing touchdown. Week three against the Lions, they completely disappeared. But let's not forget the Lions defense has given up 12 touchdowns to opposing running backs this season alone. So, again, that was a little bit of a fluke week. In week four, they scored a touchdown. Week five, they were down for majority of that game against the Indianapolis Colts on Monday night. The running game went out the window. Lamar Jackson, 37 for 43 passing. That narrative was already kind of written by itself. And in this last week, three total rushing touchdowns for the Baltimore Ravens offense from their respect of running backs so as a whole this offense has had seven rushing touchdowns from their running backs in the first six weeks of the season i think there's a lot of potential for Devonte freeman finding the end zone and finding you a lot of success this weekend moving on to the space stone we talk about marquez calloway of the New Orleans Saints currently only being started in 25% of leagues. Marcus Callaway is a wide receiver that, in my opinion, based on what I've already talked about earlier this week in terms of my wide receiver rankings, I do think he has a lot of potential upside. The fact that Michael Thomas has not returned, of course, gives Marquez Callaway the potential of having the most targets in this respective offense. But there are other things that give him the potential of being the space stone and having the sky is the limit in terms of his overall productivity and upside. Not only is Deontay Harris the number two wide receiver of this team that has had a lot of very successful plays this season, not only is he injured and he didn't even practice the whole week with his hamstring, we also have Taysom Hill who's been dealing with a concussion that did not practice all week long, who is most likely not going to play. So with that all taken into account, who do we really have to throw the ball to in this offense? Alvin Kamara, Marcus uh, Callaway, maybe Kenny Stills if he is up to task, and the tight ends, Juwan Johnson and Adam Trotman, they haven't really been consistent options in this respective offense. So when I look at Marquez Callaway, and he's coming off of a performance in week five prior to his bye week in week six, where he take, he took on the Washington football team, four catches on eight targets for 85 receiving yards, two touchdowns, 22 and a half fantasy points. And I look at how many points the Seattle Seahawks, this upcoming week's matchup, has given up to opposing wide receivers. My goodness, is it an advantageous matchup? Deontay Johnson last week had nine catches for 71 yards. The week prior, we had Robert Woods go for 12 catches, 150 Cooper Cup, seven catches for 92. Debo Samuel, eight catches, 156, and two touchdowns. Justin Jefferson, nine catches, 118 yards, and a touchdown. Julio Jones, six catches, 128 yards. Even in week one, the Seattle Seahawks gave up two receiving touchdowns to Zach Paschal. There's a lot of receiving upside in this respective offense. And I think, of course, Jameis is going to be airing it out in order to help his team succeed. Marcus Callaway is going to be the guy catching majority of those passes. He's a fantastic option this week in an incredible matchup when there's not a lot of other options to throw to in the Saints offense. Moving on to our number three, we talk about the reality of the situation as we collect the ether and or the reality stone. And reality can be whatever we want it to be. But in this specific scenario, when we look at the reality of the situation for the 49ers and the Indianapolis Colts secondary, we see a lot of potential for a Brandon Ayuk. 
Though Brandon Ayuk has been relatively nothing this season. In fact, in the last three games, has only had 13 targets, 7 receptions, 84 yards, and a touchdown for 18.7 total half PPR fantasy points. On average, it's about 6 points per week in a half PPR, which is nothing. But as it currently stands, he's being started in 30% of leagues on Yahoo. And when I think about what the potential is of a Brandon Ayuk and the reality of the situation, let's look at exactly what the offense is going to hold for the 49ers. You do not have George Kittle. Yes, you have Debo Samuel, who is going to probably have himself a great week, and Elijah Mitchell out of the backfield. But there aren't that many receiving options for Jimmy Garoppolo. So he's definitely going to have to air it out, and he's definitely going to have to look in the direction of Brandon Ayuk. Because again, he is going to be the number two receiving option in terms of snaps, in terms of targets this upcoming week against the secondary that is very much so shorthanded in terms of their overall potential. Not only are they going to be missing Rocky Sin, who's been you know injured for the last couple of weeks, and Julian Blackman, who had himself a season-ending injury at practice the other day, one of their starting safeties. They also have uh, you know Xavier Rhodes, who has been injured for majority of the season, who has still been limited throughout practice. And is probably going to be once again exposed and probably scored upon this upcoming week. And why I say once again is because this secondary has struggled mightily. Not only did they give up 9 catches for 89 total yards to Brandon Cooks last week. 9 catches for 125 and 2 touchdowns to Hollywood Brown. We've even seen players like Westbrook Ikinney. 4 catches, 53 and a touchdown. Uh, against them we've seen Cooper Cup. 9 catches, 163, 2 touchdowns. Devontae Parker, 4 catches, 77 and a touchdown. Lockett, 4 catches, 102 touchdowns. DK Metcalf. Four catches, 60 yards, and a touchdown. This secondary has given up, or is at least tied with the most receiving touchdowns to opposing wide receivers with the Tennessee Titans. They've given up, I think, the ninth most points to opposing wide receivers thus far this season. And of course, Debo Samuel, he's going to feast. But I think they're looking to get more involvement out of Brandon Ayuk. I've heard a couple things this week in terms of articles posted by some beat writers for the 49ers saying that Debo Samuel thinks this is Brandon Ayuk's breakout week. And based on how he's practiced all week long, this should be it. I'm hoping that's the case. And I'm hoping that his teammate, the guy that lines up across the field from him, knows exactly what he's talking about. The reality of the situation leads to potentially Brandon Ayuk succeeding this week and maybe his last final stand and the last time that we could potentially trust him. Moving on to our next hidden gem. We'll travel to New England and Foxborough will give us the time stone in order to maybe turn back some time or look towards the future and what we could potentially see out of Ramondre Stevenson and his potential. Ramondre Stevenson is currently the backup running back of the New England Patriots offense, sitting behind Damian Harris, of course. And Damian Harris has dealt with some injuries as of late, but he's also had incredible production this season in advantageous matchups. And when we talk about advantageous matchups, the New York Jets come to mind first and foremost as they are giving up the most points to opposing running backs thus far this season on average in a half PPR scoring format. In fact, this season alone, they've given up double-digit performances to nine different running backs in the first five games of their respective season. Again, let's not forget, they had a bye week in week six. So in five games, they've given up at least two performances per game almost on average of 10 or more points. So when I think of, okay, Ramondre Stevenson's in this lineup, and yes, we have you know Damian Harris, but why not Ramondre Stevenson getting some touches like he did last week and surpassing double-digit fantasy point total? I think that's certainly going to be the case, and I think there's a reason why there's 10% of leagues out there that are starting him. And though many of them may be desperate, I think whether you dread it, run from it, destiny is going to arrive all the same. And in this specific circumstance, Ramondre Stevenson is going to find success. Let's talk about those nine performances in which running backs have just dumpstered the Jets' defense. Christian McCaffrey in week one, 23.2 points. James White and Damian Harris. James White with 15.5 and, and Damian Harris with 12.9 fantasy points in week two. We saw Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon in week three, 11.7, 14.6 fantasy points. In week four, Jeremy McNichols, 12.5, while Derrick Henry went for 24.7. Cordero Patterson, Mike Davis in week five in London, 14.9 out of Patterson, 11.1 out of Mike Davis. There is so much potential upside here. The running game for the New England Patriots, it's what they pride themselves on. They have for the last five plus years. The statistics show it. They give their running backs more opportunities than majority of the teams in the National Football League. They've been in the top five of that category for the last couple years here. And with Mac Jones under center, of course, they want to run the ball more. They want to establish that in order to give him the ease of using play action and opening up this offense that much more. And when I went and I watched this game between the Dallas Cowboys and New England Patriots last week, Ramondre Stevenson looked fantastic. So did Damian Harris, but him getting work in the passing game, three targets, three receptions, 39 yards, makes me think maybe, in fact, he can fill into this 
James White role. And though he doesn't have the skills that James White does in the passing game, I mean, neither did Rex Burkhead. Rex Burkhead last season was a dominant force in the passing game with Cam Newton those couple weeks prior to his injury. I think Ramondre Stevenson's an incredible option and something you guys should be looking for, not only as maybe someone you could start this week, but maybe you could roster for coming weeks ahead. Moving on to the penultimate hidden gem, we talk about the Soul Stone. And like we know, the Soul Stone requires a sacrifice. And like we talked about a little bit earlier, Latavius Murray will not be playing, but that's not the only player in this offense for the Baltimore Ravens that will be missing. Sammy Watkins joins him as another player that is going to be out with an injury and has been snapped away by the gauntlet itself. We talk about the Soul Stone and Rashad Bateman. And in order to go ahead and have himself a great week, everything has potentially been set up for him. Not only is he only being started in 11% of leagues, which means that his roster ship is probably not very high, and not only did he have his first performance of his NFL career last week, I think that this upcoming week's matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals really does allow a lot of potential here. Not only did Rashad Bateman play the second most percentage of snaps amongst all wide receivers on the Baltimore Ravens last week in week six against the Los Angeles Chargers, uh, you know, 65% of those snaps. He was played against a very difficult defense. In fact, you know, one of the bottom five in terms of giving up the fewest points to opposing wide receivers from the Los Angeles Chargers. And that's why the Baltimore Ravens had themselves three rushing touchdowns in that contest because all they had to do was run the ball and kill clock. Going into this upcoming week's matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals, I think this is going to be a game in which, of course, it is a higher scoring back and forth contest. And that's why I think Devontae Freeman is going to succeed. And not only that, I think there's a potential in which Rashad Bateman succeeds. And he gets himself in a situation in which he can get himself over, you know, 40, 50, 60 receiving yards and maybe even accompany his performance with a touchdown. When there is so much attention being directed with Marquise Brown as a red zone threat and a deep threat. And of course, Mark Andrews is a red zone threat and at times a deep threat. There's always going to be a lot of the pressure and a lot of the coverage kind of shifted in their direction. And when that's the case, Lamar Jackson's looking for the open man. And without having that many you know, potential targets going to running backs as they typically don't venture down that path, it'll be towards their wide receiver too. And I think Rashad Bateman is certainly in line for a great performance here as our soul stone of the week, as the sacrifice has already been made, and we move on. To the final hidden gem for this week, we talk about DJ Dallas. As it currently stands, from what I've seen and what I've heard from the injury reports and the beat writers for the Seattle Seahawks, Alex Collins is most likely not going to play. He's currently only rostered in 4% of leagues, and I think he's currently being started in less than 1%. But if, in fact, you were depending on Alex Collins playing this weekend, maybe you have to think again because Alex Collins did not practice the whole week with that hip injury. And if, in fact, DJ Dallas is going to be the starting running back out of the backfield for the Seattle Seahawks, well, it's going to be a very difficult matchup against the New Orleans Saints. But I think they're up for the task. And I look at what the potential is of DJ Dallas. Last season, he started two games for the Seattle Seahawks offense when, of course, there were a variety of injuries in this backfield. And in those two games, not only did he score touchdowns, but found a lot of success. In the first game against the 49ers, 18 carries, 41 yards, and a touchdown. Five targets, five receptions, 17 yards, and a touchdown. The following week against the Buffalo Bills, seven carries for 31 yards and a touchdown, two targets, two receptions, eight receiving yards. This last week, when he came in in order to kind of help this offense, five targets, five receptions, 33 yards. He's getting a lot of work, and though a lot of people look at Travis Homer as potentially the receiving back in this offense, it looks to me like the Seattle Seahawks offense trusts in DJ Dallas far more. And going back to last season, there's obviously that trust that has been built as he has found success in this backfield. Cursed with knowledge, I believe that DJ Dallas is going to be the answer out of this backfield. For those of you who are missing now, Chris Carson and Alex Collins, DJ Dallas is his next step towards success. All right, now that we've covered our six hidden gems and collected them, going to week seven of the 2021 fantasy football season, I want to talk about some hidden gems over at underdogfantasy.com. So let's go ahead and venture there in order to collect another fantasy gauntlet of sorts, bring it all together and snap our players back into our lineups in order to help us win in week seven. All right, now that we've traveled here to Underdog Fantasy, I want to kind of explain to you guys the Pick'em's game and exactly the over-under contest that they have every single week, whether it is the NFL, the NBA, NHL, MLB. It's up to even soccer, for goodness sake. Either way, the whole premise of this game and the way to win is to go ahead and, of course, predict the future and predict what exactly we're going to see out of respective players. And let's go ahead and give you an example of sorts. If I do believe that Patrick Mahomes... Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey are all going to have incredible games and surpass their numbers of 89 receiving yards, 90 receiving yards, and 
325 passing yards. They're all going to go over those totals. And I go ahead and put a wager of $5. I can six times my money because I have three specific contests that are potentially up for grabs. Now, if, for example, and that's all above me, by the way, if, for example, we're in a situation where I think maybe, in fact, everyone's going to succeed in this offense, I can 20 times my overall gamble of sorts. Now, when I talk about this, it is very difficult to get 20 times. And though the difficulty increases, it doesn't shy me away from potentially going after something as such. But what I like to do every single week is talk, a, talk about my hidden gems and go make a pick em slip for my hidden gem. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. The two players that are currently up, and I'm sure the other ones will eventually be up, are Ramondre Stevenson and Rashad Bateman. So Rashad Bateman, 40 and a half receiving yards. All he has to do is surpass 41 receiving yards. Yes, he had 29 last week, but it was against a very difficult defense. So we'll go ahead and we'll say over on that. And then we'll follow that up with, of course, Ramondre Stevenson, who I think is going to be fantastic this weekend. And in comparison to the numbers that he's being projected, if I can find them for goodness sake, he's definitely going to go over them. Where the heck did he go? There he is, Ramondre Stevenson, 25 and a half rushing yards. Though, it is difficult for him to surpass that. He was able to get 23 in each of the last two. And I think this is going to be a one-sided contest. So if, in fact, I'm to wager $10 in this scenario, I get 30 in return. Let's go ahead. Let's give it a shot. Now, again, I want to remind you guys, whether you are trailing or fading, oftentimes it is very difficult to get these things correct. So if you want, go against the grain. Go ahead and, and put under on both of them and roll that. And maybe I'm wrong on it and you end up winning regardless. So understand I'm not 100% accurate. Trust me, that's not the case. If I was, uh, I would be, <laughs> I'd be making a lot of money over here. But nonetheless, I am confident in those two players. A couple of the other contests that I'm extremely excited about that I want to share with you guys. I'm going to talk about unders today. And in specifically, I, I don't like to talk about unders because I don't want to root against players in any capacity. But... A couple of the unders that I felt really comfortable with uh, that I've kind of found. Over under Justin Fields' total yards. I'm going under there. I think this defense is going to maul him and really get after him. Similar to the way that they went against uh, Jalen Hurts last week. Jalen Hurts had like, what, 120 passing yards, 40 rushing yards. Wasn't even close to that number. Justin Fields has never gotten even, you know, remotely close to that number. It has no business being at that number in any capacity. That is a 100% under. If I wanted to, I, I mean, yeah, th th it's just, it's it's so much a 100% under. I I'm willing to just take it by itself and try to just double my money. But you can't. You need two at least. So, nonetheless, I think I can go ahead and add a couple more unders to this scenario in order to give myself a little bit of, you know, I guess, help in this, in this situation. Robert Tunyon, I'm going under on his yardage. This season alone, in terms of yardage counts, He's had one game of 52 yards. The rest of the games, 8, 8, 8, 6, and 10. 20, 21 yards. I mean, yes, he could do it on one play, but Robert Tunyon is not being utilized in this offense enough for me to feel confident on the matter. We're going to go under there. The last under that I like, uh, let me go ahead and find him, Corey Davis. I think Bill Belichick is going to lock him down. There's a reason why he had two catches for eight yards against them in week two. It's because they double covered him and did not let him do anything I'm going under on this performance. Again, this season, he's had great, great performances, but he's also had underwhelming performances against good secondaries. And at times, 53, 54 yards can be made up on a couple plays. I think they're going to be, of course, forcing Zach Wilson to, of course, make a lot of turnovers and throw the ball into some tight windows, which, of course, isn't going to help Corey Davis. As a whole, this is the first time I've ever gone unders on players. But either way, I feel comfortable with these three. I'm going to go ahead. Line it up, run it with 10 bucks, and let's see how it ends up panning out this weekend. Now, the last Pickums lineup that I want to go after are ones that are certainly overs, and I have a lot of statistics that back the reasoning here. Let's talk about this, okay? Cordero Patterson is the first player I want to go in and add to this. 79 and a half rushing plus receiving yards. Not a lot of players are given this prop, but Cordero Patterson is an automatic success in my opinion. And a lot of these Falcons can be just overs in general. I might even go over on all of them, make a slip in that you know regard. But let's talk about Cordero Patterson in terms of his yards this season. Like in the last couple games, he's been able to do this just off of receiving yards alone. 82 receiving yards, 82 receiving yards, 60 receiving yards, getting himself a lot of work on the ground. And especially considering they're playing against Miami, one of the easiest matchups on the ground. It continues to open up more opportunity for Cordero Patterson. 
that's an automatic success in my eyes. Then we follow it up, and I look at Sam Darnold, and I think to myself, where, where is Sam Darnold, first and foremost? I gotta go scroll. There we go. 237 and a half passing yards. You know, that is really low. Amongst all quarterbacks, if we were talking about like Justin Fields surpassing that number, I would be a little concerned and I might go under. But in terms of just total passing yards for a quarterback that, yes, likes to run the ball, but is certainly going to have to pass this weekend against a secondary that isn't great, this is an automatic smash over. And when I go ahead and I look at Sam Darnold's season, the last two games he has not surpassed this number. But the first four weeks of the season easily was able to. And I think he's going to get back to that as he'll be a far more efficient quarterback as they go ahead and readjust and face far less competition than they have in prior weeks. On top of that, quarterbacks versus the New York Giants this season. Five quarterbacks have all surpassed this number. In fact, the passing yards against this team, 264, 336, 243. Sorry, I'm looking up at my other monitor. Uh, we have 302, 251. The only quarterback that wasn't able to surpass this number was Jameis Winston in that game in which they threw in the second. I mean, uh, threw as in like they threw the lead away. Uh, not literally through the ball, but he only had 226 passing yards. But that, again, is very close. Sam Darnold, automatic for me. We move on to the next option. It is in the same game. I love Sterling Shepard and his over. Kadarius Tony's not playing. We also have Kenny Galladay out. We also have Saquon Barkley out. So where does that leave this offense? Dante Pettis? John Ross? No, no, no. It leaves them with Sterling Shepard feasting. Let's talk about what Sterling Shepard has done in the last five games of his career. Prior, I mean, not including the injury game in which he faced against the New Orleans Saints. The last five games of his career with the New York Giants. 113 receiving yards, 94 receiving yards, 76 receiving yards, 112 receiving yards, and 77 receiving yards. All of those numbers surpassing this. And he's going to be the only receiving option on this field. He's an automatic in this scenario. There are other options. But I like these three first and foremost. We're riding and we're letting them go this weekend. I think those are fantastic plays based on the numbers that they currently sit at. Now, to move on, I also want to talk about the rivals situation here. Rivals is basically pitting two players against one another based on a singular statistic. So let's move on to that. So currently we sit here on the rival screen and I really do love, I mean, with all of my heart, the rushing yard competition between Patrick Mahomes and Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill is getting a, literally a one yard advantage. That's it. One yard. I mean, Patrick Mahomes has been running for his life for the last couple weeks. Let's talk about this. Patrick Mahomes, 31, 61, 26, and 45. Those are his last four games and his rushing yard totals. Tannehill, 3, 21, 9, and 56. Though he is capable of running just as much as Patrick Mahomes, I don't think he's going to. I think Patrick Mahomes and the over in terms of him potentially surpassing the total yardage of Ryan Tannehill, considering he's not even getting that much of an advantage, is an automatic play in that scenario. On top of that, uh, when I look at these other options, Jacoby Myers versus uh, Corey Davis. I don't think Corey Davis is going to be great this weekend. I think Corey, uh, Jacoby Myers ultimately is probably going to have more yardage. Nine total receiving yards isn't make or break. That's one catch. And in my opinion, Jacoby Myers will be utilized far more this upcoming weekend. I think Damian Harris versus Michael Carter is an app. I mean, this is another one of these smashes that I will take. I do not see the Jets outrunning the New England Patriots in this regard, especially starter versus starter. I'll take that in this scenario. There are a lot of great options. You just have to go ahead and, and dive right through them. Let's say, for example, Josh Jacobs versus Miles Sanders. They're giving Josh Jacobs an extra five yards. They think J Miles Sanders, the guy that isn't given the ball to run, is going to have himself a breakout game. That's what they absolutely think. And to be honest, if you're against Miles Sanders, you're thinking to yourself, well, the guy's only running the ball nine times per game. Josh Jacobs is probably going to get the ball you know, 15 plus times on the ground, he's going to have to be far less efficient in order to not surpass that number. Let's go ahead and let's roll with a Josh Jacobs here. We'll roll it out again. And of course, submit. The final thing I wanted to do is kind of put together my favorite picks of the week and just have one singular five leg parlay and see how it goes. So as you can see here, I've went ahead and built together the five leg parlay. Uh, on the very bottom, we do have the rushing yards from Mahomes versus, uh, <laughs> for Tannehill, then we're going to go with Cordero Patterson over, Sam Darnold over, Sterling Shepard over, and Justin Fields under. We're going to go ahead and throw that together. And now that we've kind of pulled this together, I want to move back to the Fantasy Gauntlet, snap our lineups back together, and end the show. As you can see, Underdog helped us complete the Fantasy Football Gauntlet. 
These are our six hidden gems for week seven of the 2021 fantasy football season. Again, do not forget to check out underdogfantasy.com. Use promo code Andrew in the link down in the description. And until next time, guys, I'll see you. Peace. Peace.